Tyron, thanks for joining us on another episode of Titan Muscle and Mind. Um, just quickly, Tyron Smith is a rugby league journeyman and now a rugby league manager. Tyron, for those that don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and the journey that you've had in rugby league? Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me, Matt. Um, all right, where do I start? The journey in rugby league, played football, or professional football for 13 years. Yeah. Played at a number of clubs. Mm. Um, yeah, lucky enough to represent my country, yeah. New Zealand. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, played almost or around 200 games, I think. 200 games? Yeah, so. Yeah. And now, yeah in the snapshot now managing yeah. yeah let's go back to your rugby league career over 200 games and correct me if i'm wrong seven clubs right seven clubs. you started at south sydney is that right yep south. started at south sydney and your junior rugby league was um was it kenzo or kenzo, Ma kenzo. kenzo yeah, now you, a player doesn't really and i think you played for the most clubs ever right I don't think anyone's done that that number before, and, and we're talking before, and we talk a lot. Why, why did you decide to play for so many clubs? Um, well, when I look back, yeah, I I, I always wanted to challenge myself. Mm. That's what I thought, and I was, you know, getting good experiences from different coaches and different organisations and different mm. teammates around me, and I just wanted to challenge myself a little mm. bit. Mm. Um, you know, being young, making different decisions, um, choices off the field, and you know, not being at my best at times could have helped. You know, you know, yeah, moving, but ultimately, I think it was to, to continue challenging myself and trying to find, um, yeah, the best me, me as a player. You started at South Sydney, right? And how old were you when you made your first great debut? I think I was, mate, about. 18, 19. 18. Yeah. So from the time you started to the time you pretty much finished your career, mm -hmm. what did you learn about yourself during that, 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 that period? Mate, I learned so much. I learned, um, you know, I think a lot of, lot of ex-footy players or people coming to the end of their professional careers, you start to look back and see how you took things for granted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not, not seizing like we did, played some big games and had big experiences and, mm. and, and that sort of stuff in the sporting arena, but just just looking back, I'd like to say that I could have focused, did the little things right mm. and really taken advantage of, yeah. of the position I was in at, at those different times. Yeah. You know, I see you training your son, he comes into the gym. And I remember before he made his debut for the Bulldogs. I mean, he made it a few years ago, but then the run that he had last uh, this year. Um, I'll never forget the comment you, you said to me. You said, when you go to training, just make sure when, you, when you're doing your sprints, you give it 100%. When you're in the weights room, you give it 100%. You keep doing those little things right. Now, as a player, when you were playing, um, when you were young, did you have that same mindset? Because you would have had different challenges back then mm. to, to what your son has it now, that you know, they're exposed to more. What were some of the challenges you had back then and how were you, how were you going into training every time you turned up um, to, to your club? Back, back when I was playing? Mm. I think myself didn't focus too much on, on the little things. Mm. Like, always wanted just the big, to achieve the really big things. Mm. I didn't have an understanding of knowing the little things mm. actually mm. become the big things. Like mm. you hear, one percenters do the one percent, mm. right? Mm. And the big things come automatically. Yeah. I never had that, I didn't really know about it. Mm. So there wasn't as much knowledge I found mm. for myself. Maybe I was just following the players around me mm. and doing what a lot of them mm. did, you know? Instead of searching or um, yeah, searching or, 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 mm. or proactively going mm. out to yeah. wanting to find a better me yeah. and finding the little things that I could do mm. better. Yeah. So 
and, and back to, to Remus, I know that that's what creates success. Mm. It's when you have a clear mind, you understand exactly what you need to do. Mm. And when you focus on it, if you're, if it's a sprint, if it's taken off the mark, then you are really focused on achieving that goal mm. of bang, off the mark, mm. if that's what it is. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's knowing this. If I didn't, I didn't you know You didn't that. know that? No, I didn't. If, if you look back at that, right, if you look back at your time, did you have anyone around you like the knowledge that you have now? Do you think that's one of the biggest advantages of you being a player manager now? Like, did you have anyone like that manage you back then? Um, there would have been people around mm. to give me that sort of advice mm. if I wanted to. You know, Bobby McCarthy, who I still speak to yeah. now. But it was just me as a person mm. or not being able to... Firstly, not knowing that's what I need. I didn't know. Mm. So, yeah, it was about what I do now is mm. teach the younger guys or the players that I look after mm. that you have to extract, you have to be proactive mm. about finding the things that you need to yeah. make you better and more successful. Yeah, yeah. When you were playing back in, in your day, mm -hmm. there would have been a few players there that you looked up to. Um, and that you go, wow, I could see this guy putting in more effort. I could see this guy um, playing on the field and he's a good leader. Which players back in your day that did you look up to that you looked as like a mentor? Mate, to be honest, Mets, in that, I never really had a, a players that I looked up to. Hmm. The people, you know, I've been asked this before, maybe a hmm. while ago. My dad was someone that I looked up to. Hmm because of his work ethic, because yeah. of what he was, because of how much he sacrificed. Yeah. You know, I remember being a young kid when he would be gone when we woke up, mm. he wouldn't be home when we go to bed. Yeah. So that hard work, yeah, they're yeah. the people that I looked up to. Yeah. I was given an opportunity in rugby league because mm. of, you know, a, a collective, collectively a few things happening in my mm. way, but yeah, as a mentor, mm. people like my dad, yeah. Footy players, not really. Not really I just no. was in, I was just, you know, I admired players. Mm. I could see guys that were freaks, and mm. I always wonder how they got that good or were they yeah. gifted. It must have been, you know, yeah. just something that, that they were lucky enough to yeah. be. That's how I, yeah, that's how I thought of things yeah. as a footy player. Mm. Like, he's lucky, he's good, he's mm. up there, he must mm. have got help. This guy must yeah. just be a freak mm. instead of understanding that yeah. you, know, you do the little things right and mm. the sky's the limit. Mm. Like we Knowing what you know now and, 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 and obviously maturing and having more wisdom, mm -hmm. do you think if you had that mindset that you have now, you, would have, you could have achieved more as a rugby league player or do you feel like you've achieved everything as a player at that time? No, no, definitely. No. Yeah. yeah. I know the information, like I saw, we, you know, we learn and we grow mm. and, and in hindsight we can say a lot, but mm. the information that I give the guys that I look after, people around me, anyone that asks, mm. I like to help people myself. Mm. That if I had that, mm. and I was in a clear mindset to mm. put that up into place, mm. then I think I could have been a, mm. a, a much You could have gone even further, yeah. Much, much better. Yeah. Off camera, before we're talking about your purpose, mm. you know what I mean? And, and, and you said you want to empower people. Mm. How did you evolve into that now? Why do you, why do you want to do that now? Um, at this point in your career as a manager? You know, I've retired 13 years ago. Mm. I started the business managing big interest of mine towards the end of my career. Yeah. You know, just, I, I just thought that I could have had someone that I could have related to, um, the players around me that I grew up with, sold the monos and we yeah. played right to our career. He did mm. just a little bit more guidance and I just thought that that's mm. something that I could give. Yeah. So, so that's why I got into that. Mm. Um, How hard was it? Mean, let me ask you a question, man. How hard is it managing players? Because I see on TV what player managers must go through mm -hmm. from the actions players take today. And through social media, there's videos everywhere. It's easy to get caught back in the old days when 
that wasn't as apparent. You could get away with more. Just how hard is it for a player manager to control that and make sure the players do the right thing? Um, like we can't control everything, mm. like we know. People make choices in life and, life and, and then their decisions, mm. right or wrong. Mm. Um, but I just think having a good relationship with them and mm. keeping them accountable. Yeah, yeah. So communication, yeah. I talk with my players a lot. Yeah. I like to know, you know mm. about what's where they are in mm. a day, in every couple of days yeah. in a week. You yeah. know, I like to know mm. that, um, to understand what's important to mm. them mm. and, and keeps that, that yeah. find that keeps them you know, making better choices. More accountable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Recently, you we were talking and you travelled to England, and I think it was for three, four days, mm. just to make sure the player got the right treatment there. And you weren't there for long. And, and I, I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, you said you didn't have to go there, but you did. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like to go over and beyond. Yeah. Because I have really good relationships with the, with the players that I look after. Mm. We build that, we build it over a long time. Yeah. Um, and what I like to do is, you know, when I talk about a play and mm. what he's going to bring in the mm. club, we get in, 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 into an understanding of mm. what, what the player is mm. and what the club's going to do. Mm. Then I'd like to take the player over mm. there to mm. get it off on the right, on the right foot. Yeah, yeah. There's so many stories of players not being picked up at, at, at the airport, players mm. not having a car, players mm. you know, over in England, no heater working in. In the, you know, in yeah. the winter and that sort of wow. stuff. Yeah. So I like to make sure that I hold mm. the clubs accountable. Mm. I always hold my players accountable mm. and I'm accountable yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. So when with the three of us are on the same page, here mm. he is, yeah. this is what he stands for, this is what we've spoken about, we have a clear understanding yeah. of it, then I find yeah. that's the best. Works well. Yes, you, you start off at the top of the chain. Mm. Yeah. Players moving in England, right? Uh, they're young. Um, what's the transition like for the players that you manage that move to England and what kind of advice do you give them? Um, I don't think it's, it's the first time, pretty much this year, players, mm. you know, rugby union guy, big team, you know, the has been over to Japan and, and Glasgow, but rugby league, um, mm. Sui Matangi's gone over this mm. year and Blake Austin's mm. going there in a couple, maybe a week or so. Yeah. Um, I think it's important, the advice that I give them is to be clear on why you're going, mm. to be clear on what you want, mm. and to be clear on you building mm. your career. Yeah. You know? So I've changed, I think, it's a different mindset mm. to, um, you're not, the mindset behind players going to England is when you're not wanted anymore. Mm. You're, you're yeah. old, get over there and try and cash in. Mm. But I think to change it, if you have a family, mm. you want to spend time raising your kids, yeah. and spending it with your wife, and Molding a family mm. in England is a good place to do it because mm. they only train a couple of hours a day, mm. four times a week. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. So, teach your kids to be worldly, mm. to have a great education system over there, mm. but be a really hands on yeah. dad. I think that's important. Mm. That's what you want. Yeah, yeah. That's great advice that you give them. Mm. I didn't realize it was only two hours a day. So, you, you get them to focus on areas of their life that's going to actually help them be a better player on the field. Yeah. When you look at the players here in Australia, you know, we just touched on it before. What kind, of a, what kind of challenges are they going through these days to perform at their best on the field, as opposed to what it was like in your day? What are the different challenges that they face? Yep, um, I think there's a lot more pressure mm. just because of um, the circumstances around the social media and mm. stuff. Mm. Um, I think they, um, they get hammered a lot, yeah. controlled a lot, you know? yeah. so, yep. so that's challenges to them. Mm. Um, I think they're, um, the game's tougher, yeah. a lot more wrestle, mm. it's a lot, they're like big strong mm. guys now, you know, they were yeah. always strong when I played, but not so technical and, mm. and functionally strong in different areas, which yeah. they are now. Yeah, um, yeah so... Definitely the pressures of, of the social pressures that yeah, they yeah, get. Yeah, the pressures are, are, are a lot bigger. The big bigger. Uh, yeah, the yeah. money's bigger, the, the scrutiny, mm. the, the, yeah, everything's magnified. Yeah. yeah. You look at the recent coaching merry-go-round in rugby league. Mm -hmm. 
um, it's changing a lot. It's, it's not the same as it used to be. You've ne we've never seen this many coaches move around. Um, what do you think it does for the player morale, like the players that you manage? How does that affect them? Does it affect them? Does it have an effect? Do they go there for the coach? Or are they there just, what do you say to them? Do you say, look, just focus on the club you're going to rather than the coach? Because we don't know how long they're going to be there anymore. What I say to that, firstly, the mm. coaching merry-go-round and how it is, that's what rugby league's developing mm. into. To you. No, they they'd say to you, mate, you can sign a four year deal, you're guaranteed that money's mm. six, you know, it's mm. guaranteed. Mm. But like we've had cases this year, if you're not performing in mm. that first year and you're highly paid, the mm. club's getting rid of you. Mm. The club's shopping you around. And of course you can stay at that club. Mm. But being a young kid, being at a club, knowing the coach doesn't want you, the management don't want you, no one else, mm. you know, is looking to build around you. Yeah. It affects you mentally, mm. it affects your confidence. Mm. So sometimes you're better off moving mm. instead of hanging on to that, mm. that contract bigger. Yeah. So rugby league is, it doesn't surprise me now. Mm. Coaches is leaving. You know what, and, and yeah. you know what, it happens the other way around. They can have, you know, it's happened this year as well mm. with those same coaches, they've mm. got contracts. Mm. Clubs are moving on from them. Mm. They mm. still pay them, but they're, yeah. no. they've asked them. So mm. that's that's just the way it's going now. There's there's no loyalty I mm. find mm. in rugby league. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I teach my players this. There's loyalty in life, but mm. yeah, there is. In life. You're yeah. To your, your family, yeah. your wife, your kids, yeah. whatever it is, your parents. Mm. You're loyal. There is loyalty mm. in rugby league, not necessarily. Yeah. But don't. But get it right. Get you know right. that the loyalty you got to keep moving. You got to mm. get moved on. Mm. You know, so yeah. you've got to have a clear understanding of yeah. it. We, we went just back to your saying. Mm. My purpose, mm. my purpose for managing mm. is to empower players. Mm. This is what I do. Mm. Empower them. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I teach them to to know about yourself first. Know what's important to you. Mm. Know what what. What you're not going to compromise. Mm. Know, mm. know what your, 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 you know, your, your beliefs. Mm. Yeah. Know all of that stuff. Mm. Make sure about it. Mm. And then, if you're a rugby league player, we'll fit you in to the NRL and work out what the NRL can do for you. Mm. you understand that? So, so not the other yeah. way around. Yeah, 100%. So, that, you, you, you're spot on there. You want them to have values and principles yeah. that they that's the core of who they are. Mm. Whatever happens at those places and those clubs, yeah. it's it's really it doesn't matter because you get them empowered so they take control of that. Yeah. Instead of the yeah, environment control. taking control yeah. of them. Yeah, I get so that. So many times I see and I've seen it in, 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 in my playing days mm. that what I've worked out is if you're focusing on the fame. Mm. So, you know, your ego, your fame, mm. and how many people like you, and how many um, tries you score, mm. and, and the crowds, and all of that. Mm. The fame of it, and the fortune. Mm. So your main focus is, is, is your, yeah, how many people know you, your status, and mm. what you're about, mm. and rugby league, and loving the crowds mm. roaring, and focusing on money. Mm. The thing, the problem with that I see, mm. is that that's okay when that's all happening. Mm. They get to the end of their career when they just take that away and mm. there's no money and you're yesterday's hero, then you're an empty shell. Empty pretty shell much. Yeah. You don't know who you are. Yeah. You conform to all the things yeah. around you, all the challenges. Mm. So that's why I'm saying to the players that I look up to, know about yourself. Mm. Will Hopawadi, you might play in the grand final, you might play Origin, second or third youngest person mm. ever. But if it's a desire for you to go mm. away and follow your beliefs, mm. mate, yeah, you're yeah. strong. Yeah. That's what you are. Mm. Let's get, do it. Let's make yeah. it happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dallin Martin is a listener. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't swear. Mm. Never been in a nightclub. Wow. You know? Yeah. He's, 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 he's very religious, mm. but his um, con uh, contact, Aggression on the Love field, yeah. they just can yeah. go to another place. Mm. But understand who you are, mm. understand your key fundamentals mm. for you, and we'll fit the NRL around you if it's the NRL or any other sport. Yeah. That's what you got to know, and you can yeah. drive it. Yeah, I love that. 
So you pretty much stay true to who you are. 100%. And you, I mean, you, you talk about you talk about his career and how well he's playing, um, his presence on the field. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And I see that with you, with Remus. It, you give him the same message and it's consistent. And it's this repetition, this message. I feel like a lot of young people don't know who they are. And that's where they get into trouble. They don't know who they are and they get controlled by the people around them. What it seems to me that you do, and I think what's probably going to set you apart from most football managers, is you care a lot, so much about the player that you're trying to help them find out who they are and their purpose. And I think that's what sets you apart. If, if you look at the next five years of where you're going, right, with, with football managing, what do you want to improve on? What do you want to get better within rugby league and the players themselves? What, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Mate, that's, that's a good question. Mm. And I love what I do. Mm. I, I, I love making people better. Mm. I love watching them grow. Mm. Like their weddings, they go to the boys' weddings. Yeah. Like, you know, watch their kids grow. Mm. Like, I just want to continue doing that. Mm. I want to continue giving them what they want. Mm. I want to continue being there to support them. Mm. I want to continue making them as successful as possible mm. in all areas. Yeah. Including, you know, their contracts. They yeah. deserve it. Yeah. They put their bodies on the line mm. every week, mm. every training run. Mm. Like they're yeah, one wrong move away from. Mm. It's different sitting in an office. Yeah, yeah. It can happen, but this is what they're doing. Mm. So, I don't know, five years, I, I want to be, again, the best, the best person. Mm. And the best manager. Mm. Do you have uh, aspirations? Do you look up different managers and, 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 and look at what they do? And then you got to kind of go, this is where I want to be at. Like I, I know as a, as a gym owner, you know, when I do podcasts or interviews or seminars, um, there's people that I look up to. But then I always go, I don't like, I don't watch myself all the time, but I have people that will critique me. I don't, I don't mind that because I want to get better. And I'm always like, that's just that performance. My next performance has to get better and better and better. Do you, do you kind of look up to, is there any f football manager that could be in other leagues, could be in soccer, could be in baseball, could be in NFL, that you go, well, that's somewhere I want to get to. Do you ever look at that? Um, more, more of the inspiration yeah, point, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, we can never be anyone else. Yeah. We can only be a version of ourselves. But more as, that inspires me, like, that's cool, I know where I want to be, but man, I like what he's done there. Um, Look, I, I remember watching Jerry Maguire, that's what I'm talking about, Jerry Maguire. Mate, people have told me a bit about when they understand what I do, mm. they always refer to that. And mm. I watched the movie about it a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jerry Maguire, yeah. And there are similarities. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, maybe, you know, just, not necessarily looking up to anyone else. I just mm. know. I just mm. know what I needed. You know, yeah. And I know of these guys and I can understand them. Mm. And, and I just want to give them the tools, mm. all individually. Mm. So, you know, how do you manage, how do you manage players? Mm. I don't know how, how I manage someone individually. Mm. I have to sit down and work yeah, it out. Yeah. You know, we do things like um, we train, train mm. together Saturday mm. mornings in the mm. off season. Yeah. The boys come. Blake Austin comes up from mm. Canberra. Dallin Martin is Lisnek from Penrith mm. Alder, Manu mm. Mao. We get mm. together. We come in. Mm. We challenge ourselves. Yeah. We run the stairs. Okay, what days are they? Because I want to make sure I get there. Saturday mornings. Saturday mornings. What time? Six thirty tomorrow morning, mate. Um, that's Friday. Oh, no, it's Saturday. Oh. No, it's Saturday. I'm there. I'm no, gonna. No, 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 no. Saturday. Sorry, to tell you. I'm gonna Saturday, come. Yeah. I'm gonna come. Come down, down mate. I'm gonna come down. But challenge yourself. Yeah, but yeah. It's more. I'm and I have to there. explain this to them. Yeah. I've explained it and I always talk about it when we're mm. training. It's not the matter of coming here and running the stairs. Mm. You can run the stairs here in Penrith, mm. wherever you want. Yeah, it's yeah. not the actual stairs. Mm. It's the commitment. Mm. It's the preparation mm. that you make your... Yeah. 
the, the commitment to come. So come Friday on. night, people are going to do stuff. Uh -huh. So it's I like the mindset that, that you're training, mm. first and foremost. Mm. Then from Penrith, they leave at 5 o'clock wow. in the morning. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So they're up at 4.30 when the mm. alarm's going off. These are mm. the tough things. Mm. These are the things that are challenging. Yeah. Are you going to get up? You're not getting paid for it. Not what coach is telling you. It's mm. not a matter of your contract, it's you. Yeah. So you're always training your mind. Then you get up, then you drive. Yeah. That's the hard stuff done. Mm. You're here, you don't have to train. I tell the yeah. boys, you've driven here, that's enough. You can have yeah. to sit here, rest if you want. Mm. But if you want, hey, we're going to do 20 stairs today. Mm. You know what I mean? Is it 20? 20 not 20 stairs. up and down. 20 up and down? Yeah, 20. Wow. Okay. No, no, no. 20 halves. 20, 20 halves. halves. But fast. Wait a second. 20 halves is 10. Yeah. Wow. I was but doing then, four. Like I thought that, I was doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was doing all right. I had to get my game up, man. Fuck. Yeah, man. Well, 25 is what? 25. 25 we did on Saturday. 25 yeah. halves. So I did a, did some with Will on Tuesday morning because he called me Monday night and said he came for tomorrow. I said, yeah. So we met at 6 o'clock and mm. 20 halves. When was that? Yesterday? Tuesday, no, Tuesday. Tuesday morning. Fuck, okay. All so right. if you get what I'm getting to, so I give know, them man, an I understanding, know. Mitch, mm. give them an understanding of... Give them a goal. Yeah, at yeah. the end of it, you train and you mm. test yourself mm. and you challenge yourself okay. against each other. Yeah. Besides you, the, the initial mm. stuff, the mental toughness, yeah. you're going to get fit. Yeah. Stairs. Man, but that's... Fitness is the last thing, you understand? Mm. Yeah. That's all your mindset challenging yourself. That's how I like them to understand. Mm. And that's what it comes down to. Mm. How much do you really want something? And th those stairs, just to give people context, there's no running away from those stairs because you get to get up them. And they're steep and they're uneven. Uneven, steep. And they're steep. Mm. And, and, and the 225, and especially, this is what I love about them. And this is what I love about you. Friday night, you can't go out if you want to do 20 stairs. Mm. You've got to make that commitment because you chose to play that game. Yeah. And as a manager, you're making them accountable, but you're there with them. Yeah. That's, that, that speaks volumes for you. Uh, honestly, it does. Um, look, I've got a couple more questions that I want to I wanna get into. And, um, and, and, uh, and I want to know, if I'm a young player now, and I want to I I make it to the NRL. I'm like this young kid and I'm watching football on TV and I'm watching all these heroes. What are some of the attributes I need to be able to make it to that level? And what do I need to do in order to have that commitment to be that next, I don't know, Andrew Johns? Um, and I'm watching Jonathan Thurston, because these are kids, these young kids watch their heroes. What does it take, Tom? Well, they're all, I, I feel my opinion, they're all individual, like Jonathan Thurston mm. and Andrew Johns, these guys, mm. right? They're, they're, they're very talented mm. players mm. and they've developed their talents mm. from eight years old mm. to, I don't know, say this, 18. Yeah. What I know mm. is what you do from a young age as a footy player to, you know, you're 16, 17, 18, mm. before you go into mm. the top squad, you can do exact. A player will do exactly what he's done mm. in that time at an elite level. Mm. You understand that? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. You know, if you've scored tries beating people on the inside and outside, you'll do that. If you're mm. a barging player, if you're a, I reckon a Boyd Courtner, mm. if running good lines, tough, turning up, playing eighty minutes, uncompromising, mm. would have been doing that his whole career. Mm. Latron Mitchell, there's footage of him that yeah. I've seen at 14 doing exactly what he's doing here. Mm. So those individual talents and mm. skills you develop, yeah. Mm. But if you have a clear understanding, and I say this with respect, I think anyone can nearly play in our own mate. Really? Anyone can do it. Yeah. You know, you've got to have the right luck, be in the right places. Mm. You create your own luck, mm. yeah? Mm. You create your own life. Yeah, yeah. Injuries and those side, those things mm. aside, when you break down the fundamentals of Sui Matangi, mm. what does he do off a kickoff? Just runs out. He runs hard. Mm. Have you seen him do 40, 20, double cutter, anything? No. Like? No, no. no. So his job, when he identifies it and knows it, is to carry as hard as he can, find mm. his front, get up and play the ball. Mm. Mm. Tying the line up to yeah. the 
So when you break it right down to mm. that, mm. you know, if you've got a, a, um, some experience in rugby league and mm. you focus and know your strengths mm. and your weaknesses mm. and what you're good at and mm. identify mm. and pull everything apart mm. and then work on those clear fundamentals, mm. you give yourself a massive chance. Have a, a clear mindset, I think that, that, that making people better around you, in mm. life in general, mm. but in rugby league, mm. there is a, a stigma with, or, or it is a fact, I'm challenging you. You're mm. a back row and I'm a back row, it's mm. me, you, who's gonna get picked? And mm. so people are trying to push this guy and trying to sabotage mm. it. Maybe make them better, you can make them better. That yeah. you as a player and a person, you won't be stopped. Yeah, so yeah. all those sorts of things. Yeah. What I loved about that is like, if you break it down and you, you look at the fundamentals, they're pretty simple. Yeah. And all you've got to do is stay committed to the simplicity yeah. and just keep perfecting it. That's what I, what I got from that stay for sure. Stay true to yourself. Stay true to yourself. So the guy in the mirror who heard all these yeah, yeah. reasons. Yeah. What's your passion? Mm. Why do you want to do it? Like all yeah. of those things. Yeah, yeah. When you get clear on it mm. and you have some clear guidance, mm. Someone you can trust now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's what I've been with, with my life. Like honesty, eh? Hey, you think honesty, like you've you got to be honest, eh? Yeah. 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 Trustworthy. You need mm. to be honest. Yeah. If you're not up to it and you're not doing that yeah. right, mm. you have to be told because mm -hmm. otherwise you're never evolving. One of the things I love about you, you're honest, you're very positive, you're very optimistic and you can see it in Remus and you can see it in your family and that's how you live your lives, which I love. Now, we're kind of coming to the end, right? And I just want to ask you um, this final question, right? And I ask a lot of my guests this, like, what does Tyron Smith want to be known for? Um, what do I want to be known for? I'd like to be known as no matter what that someone that's going to do everything he can to make you better mm. to help you when you're down to celebrate when you're up mm. to be a person that's just general good guy I mm. like that I, I like being a good person I mm. believe that good things come to good people mm. and the more you give the more you get mm. back mm. I, I know it that's mm. what I want in mm. my life. That's what I want to get known. Mm. Tyrone, what I got from this is, and I, I'll always learn about you, but I've always known this. You're a selfless human being. You're out to make people better. You're out to empower people. And that's one thing I love about you. And I've known you for so long. And I can tell anyone out there that doesn't know you, that's exactly who you are and the guy that I had on the podcast today. Finally, as a player manager, where can, I know you're not on so, most player managers aren't on social media, but I think I've got it here where people can find you. Like if I'm, sorry, I've got it. Okay, sports player management. Okay, so you're in his Instagram player, uh, sports player management. Yep. So if I'm if I'm a young aspiring footballer or playing for another club, I'm looking for a manager. Mm -hmm. Where can I find you? But the best place will be to go on on our website. Yep. Uh, www.sportsplayer.com.au mm. www.sportsplayer.com.au yeah, mm. um, and Instagram as well is, is, is that as well? Yeah, sports player management. Sport, sports sports player too. management. A bit old school there, mate, so I've got to get more active. And... Mate, you know what I've noticed? Most rugby league players, um, most managers at the, that age, they're not on social media, like of the, of the older generation. And there's a good cause for that, I guess. Um, but, um, my God, a guy that can help you get your name out there further through social media because he's helping a few people that are managers yeah. that can possibly get your name out there because I believe, I truly, truly believe that we need more sports managers like you who are selfless, that are empowering people. And I wish you um, man, all the best in the future, Tyrone, because you absolutely deserve it. Uh, and, and I think you should, a lot more people should be jumping on board with you. Thanks, man. I just want to thank you, brother. Thank you. Thanks a lot.